The human eye is remarkable. It lets us see the world around us. But our vision is limited. We can only see a small fraction of the electromagnetic spectrum, the narrow slice we call visible light. But our world doesn't just exist in that spectrum. There are layers of information hidden between clouds and in the darkness of night that our eyes can't perceive. This is where radar comes in. Radar technology allows us to see through what would otherwise be invisible. Radar is basically a superpower for machines. It works by sending out radio waves. These waves bounce off objects and come back to the radar like an echo. By listening to these echoes, radar builds a picture of the world around it. Radar is used everywhere, from air traffic control and self-driving cars to the movement of athletes. But it's also being used to see our Earth from space. Satellites like Sentinel-1 carry a radar instrument that observes Earth's surface day and night, no matter the weather. Sentinel-1's radar sends out waves that bounce off Earth and return to the satellite. By measuring how strong and how quickly these waves return, we can create a detailed radar image. This radar vision is essential for tracking changes in land cover, such as deforestation in the Amazon, or calculate how much carbon forests store. It plays a key role in monitoring natural disasters, like floods and earthquakes, by providing data to assess damage and guide recovery efforts. Radar's ability to see through clouds, darkness, and poor weather makes it essential in monitoring the remote and often cloud-covered polar regions. This includes tracking the movement of glaciers in Antarctica or monitoring the extent of sea ice in the Arctic. Radar imagery can help identify oil spills in the ocean aiding environmental cleanup efforts. It can also be used to monitor ships navigating through icy waters, providing a safe passage. Using different techniques to process this data, we can gain deeper insights into Earth's surface. Let's find out more. Ciao, Miguel. Ciao, Romina. Can you tell us a bit more about these radar images? Yeah, sure. Let's start with this example. This is a typical radar image. It's um, appearing in black and white. And uh, these kind of images allow us to analyze the intensity of the signal, which is bouncing back from the Earth's surface to the satellite. The intensity is a parameter measured by radar systems, and uh, basically they are it is influenced by uh, the roughness of the surface, the properties of the material, uh, which is interfering with the signal uh, by the geometry, and also by the parameters of the signal itself. In this case, what we see is bright areas here where we have the city of Shanghai, because urban areas specifically are reflecting strongly the radar signal. And on the contrary, here we see dark areas and the lake can be a good example uh, because here we have a low reflection. Okay, so we can see how radar looks at different materials, but what about agricultural monitoring? Well, it's very helpful when it comes to talk about food production and agriculture monitoring. This is an area in Vietnam full of crops um, and here we see how radar can look at these fields, specifically these are rice fields which now are appearing dark because they are flooded. A few weeks later, the same area is appearing brighter. This shows up how we can monitor the evolution of crops. And we can put together multiple acquisitions during a, a large amount of time, and colors are giving us information about the evolution and the crop cycle. So one of the benefits of using radar is that it can see through clouds and rain. How is that useful for mapping natural disasters? Well, this is a good example how we can use radar. Here we are seeing uh, the first optical image we had about the flood in Valencia. And uh, of course, we have a lot of uh, data here to analyze. Uh, we see a lot of flooded areas, but uh, look at here, uh, many clouds which are preventing us from, from having a clean overview of the situation. And of course, this is not the case when we use radar data. Radar data can always be acquired regardless of any weather condition. And as we did before for uh, agriculture, we can put together acquisition before and after the event to map the changes on the ground. And here in light blue, 
we can see all the heavily flooded areas around the city of Valencia. So what other techniques are there when you look at radar data? Radar data is not only about analyzing the intensity of the signal. An important technique is called interferometry. And in this case, we need to say that radar is also measuring parameters which are directly related to the ground motion. So specifically, this technique is very useful when we want to analyze what happened during or after an earthquake. This is an image showing the so-called interferogram, which is the product uh, that we derive when we analyze two acquisitions, two or more acquisitions, one before and one after an earthquake, for example. And this is the case of Amatrice in central Italy. And these fringes here, this pattern, is where the radar signal is detecting a motion in the ground due to the earthquake. And when we process this data, it, the interferogram is important because it can help to derive the final product, which is a ground displacement map, which is telling us how much the ground has moved due to the earthquake. We can process only two images, one before, one after an event, but we can also collect a multiple acquisitions, so a larger radar data set, over a longer period of time. And this is important when we are monitoring, for example, subsiding areas. Uh, this is the city of Jakarta, and in red you can see uh, areas which are significantly subsiding. We don't just measure how much the ground is sinking, but also how quickly it is subsiding. Geological phenomena can also go in the opposite direction. Here we are looking at the city of Naples, its region, and here we have the volcanic system of the ground fields, and due to the volcanic activity, the, the ground is uplifting. And this is visible in this map, in this blue color, which is showing up how quickly uh, the ground is rising up. Okay, thank you, Miguel. This was a great overview of radar applications. Thank you, Romina. You're welcome. These are just a few examples of the many benefits that radar vision brings. What other possibilities could radar unlock in the future? Stay tuned to find out more.